Hi, my name's Darren. Welcome to my workshop. Now in my last video, I promised that I would show you how to make hand screws or knobs for doing things up for jigs and the, and the like as I used in the boom, camera boom. Now just prior to making this video, I saw one from Stefan of CNC Kitchen where he uses these inserts for threading his parts and they prove to be extremely strong, especially the more expensive ones. But that's not what I'm going to show you today because chances are what you have lying around in your workshop are standard nuts like this and you can also use the bolt heads as well as you would. Uh, today I'm going to be using an M6 nut to uh, make this particular knob because I already have other sizes and this one will come in handy. Also M6 is a decent size for general all round bolting of plastic to use. It's probably a bit bigger than you would need for most things but when you're combining it with wood and you want the extra strength I'm a big fan of an M6 or an M8 nut or bolt. So without further ado, let's get into this. It's a fairly simple process. So the first thing we need to do is create a sketch, new sketch, and pick the plane we're going to draw on. We're going to draw on the bottom plane or the horizontal plane, if you like. And then we're going to start with a circle. And the first circle is going to be the center to let the bolt pass through. Uh, M6 is what we're going for, but we're going to go with some clearance, so we're going to go with 6.2 for the centre circle. We then want a second circle sharing the same centre, and we're going to make that one 40. That's a size I like for the hand screws. You might want to go a little bit bigger. Probably don't want to go any smaller. So we're going to go 40. Now what we need to do is cut out sections to create a spoke pattern. You could do four, I'm going to do five. I think five looks good. You could do three if you wanted, it's up to you. So again, another circle, a lot of circles involved here. And we're going to take that one out to 15. Uh, no, we're going to go 20. Let's go 20 and see what that looks like. We can always come back and change this anyway. One of the great things about Fusion 360 is how easy it is to go back in the timeline and change things. But anyway, circular pattern here, you can see where that is, is our next stop. And we're going to, I'll just bring this in so you can see that. One selected, select the center point about which we're going to rotate. You can see there's three, we want five. Uh, okay. And I think I was right about the 15. I think it should have been 15. So we're going to change that back to 15. And all the other ones will change with it. There we go. <coughs> so just to recap, we've got a 6.2 centimetre circle in the middle for the hole. Our overall dimension of our disc or our handle is going to be 40 millimetres. And each of these circles exists solely to cut out this section. All right, so now using the trim command, I'm going to clean away what we don't need. You could do this later during the extrude, but I find this way a lot easier, especially as we need to round over these edges in a second. So, T for trim, and we will remove all of the bits we're not going to need later on. Like this. And there we are, so that's the basic pattern of our knob. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to round over those edges. So we're going to come up here in sketch again, we're gonna select fillet, and we're going to put a fillet on each of these. That's a two mil at the moment. Let's see how that goes, I quite like two mil. Yep, we're gonna stick with two mil fillets on each of these corners. And there we are, so that's that one done. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to finish the sketch there. Okay, so the next stage is to extrude this up to the thickness we want. So it's obviously got to be a lot thicker than the bolt because, or the nut in this case, because we want to be able to seat the nut inside it. 
and our nut is 5.02 millimeters thick. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to select that, we're going to do an extrude, and we're going to make that 10 mil thick. There we are. Now what we need to do is cut out a section on here for our nut to fit in. So we want a new sketch and we're going to sketch on the surface of the nut this time or the surface of the knob this time. And we're going to pick circumscribed polygon. Now yours probably won't appear in the menu bar up here. You'll probably have to go down here and go polygon, circumscribed polygon. But I'm just going to pick it from there because I have it there because I use it for this sort of thing. Okay, now if you recall, we measured our nut from side to side, from face to face, at being 9.9 .9 millimetres. So with a 0.2 clearance, that would give us 10.1. Uh, I'm just going to go 10.2. Now, the thing with a circumcised polygon to remember is it's measuring from the centre to the outside flat edge. So if we're going to do a 10.2 millimetre from face to face, we need to halve that from the centre. So we're going to go 5.1 millimetres from the centre to the edge of our hexagon. So here we go, circumscribed polygon, which you can find under create polygon, circumscribed polygon. And we're coming out 5.1. Five point one. Three. Five point one. Okay, and we didn't change the number of sides from six. That's what it defaulted to, and that's what we want. Now we need to cut that section out of the actual knob. So we're going to finish sketch. And select that section. E for extrude, and we're just going to pull him down by, we're going to go minus 6. So this is a millimetre of clearance above the nut once it's inserted. So minus 6 cuts that in, and there we go. So if I move this around. Now you can see we've got our spot for our nut to sit in and our bolt to go straight through. So we're very close to done. One thing we want to do now is round over all these corners. So we'll come up to modify and we'll pick fillet. So modify fillet. There we go. Or just F. And we're going to pick this surface. We're going to do the whole surface. And we're going to go um, one millimetre. There we go. <coughs> and we'll do the same on the bottom. Pick the surface and fill it and one millimetre. And there we go. So that's pretty close to done. One thing, you could just use this actually, but one thing I'm going to do is on the bottom of this, I'm going to put a little raise so as the whole knob isn't pressing against the surface as it's being used. So we're going to again flip it onto its bottom like that. And we're going to do a little sketch. Going to do a little sketch bump, like that. And then um, a circle, center circle, will come out to the width of the nut and what have you. And we're going to finish the sketch. And we're just going to raise this section up. So E for extrude, hit that. Um, three millimeters should do the trick. going to do another fillet 
and one millimeter. And there we go. So the purpose of these fillets, besides making them look slightly neater, of course, is it's going to make the screw or the bolt easier to get in and out. It's going to reduce the friction on the surface it's turning against, because now we've only got this small portion contacting, not this whole area. And also having a little fillet here adds strength to this portion that sits up. Obviously when we're printing, we're going to have to print it this way up, uh, because we're not going to be able to print on that tiny bit and have this giant overhang. And so there we go, that is how to design a hand screw or knob for a nut or bolt in Fusion 360. So now what we're going to do is we're going to export that. So first I'm just going to save it. M6 hand screw. And export that. And because the sizes are important, we're going to go for a high refinement. M6 hand screw, save. Alrighty. And then it's a case of coming out to your slicer. In my case, of course, that's Prusa. Now you can see it's coming this way, and if you remember, I said we're gonna to have to flip it over because it's not gonna print very well like that. So what we're gonna do now is we're just going to flip it over like that. And the rest, I guess, is pretty straightforward. We're gonna slice it, dice it, and print it. 0.2 mil, we're gonna go a better quality than that. We're gonna go 0.15 mil quality. It will take a longer time to print, but again, it's more accurate and better for the sizing around the nut. Infill. Yeah, I'm gonna up the infill. We're gonna go for a really strong one. 25% is a very strong infill for something like this. And what sort of infill have we got? You can also see perimeters here while I'm on that page. We're going to up that to three just to make it a little bit stronger around the edges where it needs to be. And we're gonna click detect thin walls. I don't think we'll need it, but if there's an area where three is not gonna fit, then it won't print three. They'll just print them where they can. Okay, infill. Gyroid, I'm going to change that to 3D honeycomb, nice and strong. Okay, and that's it. Give that a slice. and we're good to go. And so there it is, printed in E-Sun Yellow. This is our finished hand screw. We're ready to uh, add our bits. So it could, as I was saying at the beginning, you could use it either with the bolt, if you held the bolt in place, and then use it like so, or as we're going to do in this instance, we're gonna put the nut in there like so and use that. So we're just going to use a little dollop of super glue, scientific term dollop, and uh, that will hold in place nicely. Is that working? Yes, okay, good. All right, I'm going to start by putting a tiny bit, just tiniest, tiniest, because I don't want it going down into the thread. That's the thing with the super glue on these. When you're doing this, is it really only needs to be the tiniest bit. It's a tight fit. This is just to stop it from falling back out of the, the hole. That's all. It's, it's not there for a lot of strength. All right, now being careful not to get glue on our fingers. There we go. We're going to pop that in there. And then just going to put a tiny bit more down the sides here so that gets sucked down via capillary action between the nut and the plastic like so and uh, and the reason I'm not going to hot melt it in is I've actually tried that on a previous one actually when I was building the boom and as I pushed it down, like I preheated the nut, and as I pushed the preheated nut into the plastic, it was very hard to keep it centered because of the shape. And it did in fact drift off center a tiny bit. And then I had to file out the hole underneath to accommodate the screw. In fact, I ended up throwing it away and making a, another one. 
and making the hole slightly wider, which I did for all of them after that, and doing exactly what I'm doing now with the super glue. Because yeah, the uh, the heat's great for the rounded inserts, pushing those in. If they've got a chamfer at the bottom, it'll follow the hole and you'll line them up nicely. But not so much with these sorts of things I found, once the hole's too small. Anyway, um, as you can see, our screw, our uh, bolt goes nicely up through the bottom now, like so, and there is our completed object. Very easy project. I think I'm starting to lose my voice and I apologise for the sniffles throughout the video. I think I'm uh, catching a cold. I thought it was just a sinus infection, but uh, obviously it's hitting the throat. My apologies. Okay, anyway. I hope that has been of some help. Hopefully you can put that to some use in your workshop or elsewhere if you have a 3D printer. And uh, obviously useful for multiple projects in multiple places. So as always... Я надеюсь, что это видео полезно для вас. Спасибо за просмотр. Хорошего дня. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video has been some use to you. Have a great day. Yeah.